Welcome to SST College of Arts and Commerce. You are watching SST Edupedia. I am Assistant Professor Varsha Savlani. In this video, we will see about the data collection. This topic is a part of research methodology, which is in MCOM Part 1, Sem 2, as well as in SY BAF Semester 4. So let's look what is data collection. For collecting the data, there are two types of collecting the data. One is called primary data, another one is called secondary data. The primary data which the researcher themselves are collecting for the first time and the secondary data is the data which is already published. Before looking at the in detail these two types, let's look what exactly the data is. For doing the research, every researcher needs to collect the information. This is a very fundamental step of doing the research. It implies the basic and unprocessed form. The data is so many. Now we have to convert that data in the format which we want. So the facts, the details, the statistics which we gathered by the uh, various sources, now we need to collect that in a proper format. As I already said, there are the two types of data, primary data and secondary data. So there are the methods, there are the techniques of collecting these data. The primary data we can collect in the three forms. One is survey or we also called it as interview method. Another one is observation method and third one is experimentation method. These are the three ways or three techniques of collecting the primary data. The survey or interview method is nothing but when the researcher is doing the field survey, is collecting the data from the respondents by making a questionnaire in a structured form majority of the time. Talking about secondary data, the secondary data is nothing but already published data. Maybe in newspapers, books, magazines, bulletins, journals, etc. So these are the techniques of collecting the primary as well as the secondary data. Now let's look in detail what exactly the primary data. The researcher which themselves are collecting for the first time from the respondents, from the ultimate sources, that is called primary data. So primary data is also called as first-hand information. In primary data, we get the information from the sources. For example, if the company wants to facing a problem of decline in sales, the company can do the survey from their customers. Now, what is the reason why the sales are declining? The reason may be the hike in price, packaging may not be that much attractive or the product is not available at their place. So n number of reasons quite possible the customers are facing. That is why they are not purchasing or not buying the product. So when the company collects the data directly from the customers, rather than taking the information from the books or the internet, that is called primary data, which is also called it as first hand information which researchers themselves are collecting. Now these are the four different methods of collecting the primary data. One is interview. As we know in interview there are the two parties interviewer and interviewee. Interviewer is a person who is taking the interview and interviewee is a person who is giving the interview. Now in, the, in our case the interviewer are the researchers. Those who want the information, up-to-date information, reliable information. So they are making the questionnaires and they are asking from the respondents. Here interviewee are the respondents. So interviewer and interviewee here means researchers and respondents. Researchers may collect the information with the help of interview. Another method is questionnaire and survey. The researchers are making the questionnaire, the list of questions that need to be asked from the respondents. That questionnaire may be in the form of multiple choice. That questionnaire may be in the form of digotomous. 
filtered questions, open-ended questions, etc. So the researchers are making the questionnaires and they are collecting the and they are doing the survey on field. That is maybe by going to the residential areas or maybe by circulating through emails, the researchers are collecting the information. The third is observation method. The observation researcher can be done in two ways, manual and mechanical. Manual, that is, say for example, if researcher as an observer, he or she went to the mall and observed the things what customers are buying, how they are doing the payment. So, observation may be done manual or nowadays in each and every organization, in each and every malls, there are the cameras inbuilt. So, with the help of cameras, the researchers can do the observation. That is called mechanical observation. So observation is not by asking the question, but in participant or we can say non-participant way say researchers can collect the primary data. The fourth is experiments. Generally this part is done in the laboratories, the science laboratories, maybe the physiological, physics lab or biological lab etc. Over there by using n number of chemicals we can come up to the new innovations or experimentation. So these are the four methods of collecting the primary data. That is interview, then we can say questionnaires or survey, observation and experimentation. These are the four techniques of collecting the primary data. Mainly if we are doing the social science, we are doing, we are getting the information through questionnaires, through survey or maybe through interview. This is the main source many researchers are obtaining. Next one now, what are, what are the merits, advantages of collecting the primary data? As the researchers themselves are collecting the primary data from the respondents, so it gives the first hand information. So primary data provides the first hand information to the researcher. In depth information, whatever the researchers are facing the problem related to that they have made the questionnaire and they are collecting the data. So to the point in depth information we can collect through primary data reliable information we can trust on it because we themselves we ourselves are collecting the data so it gives up-to-date information we can rely on such data accurate the accuracy level is much high in this primary data specific to the point whatever the problem we are facing how we have framed the hypothesis based on that we have made the questionnaire so to the point we are collecting the data Enhance the quality of research work. It is not the data which we are using by the others they have collected. The data which we are using we ourselves has collected. So it gives the quality in the research work. So many a times in academic research also nowadays the students those who are doing PG post graduation and the research scholars those who are doing PhD they themselves make the questionnaire and collect the data which enhances the quality of their research work. Helps in formulation of hypothesis. Even while making the questionnaire we can come across to formulate the hypothesis in our research work which helps to accept the hypothesis at last when we are doing the testing of hypothesis. So these are the merits of collecting the primary data or we can say advantages. Now everything has two sides. So they have the disadvantages also. The disadvantages of primary data are nothing but it, it requires a lots of paperwork. Because for collecting the primary data many a times the researchers are using the method called questionnaire. So the researcher needs to make the questionnaire, get it finalized from their respective guides and do the final drafting. Before that, do the pilot study, then collect the data from the samples. So it requires a lot of paperwork. It is expensive. At the same time, the researcher needs to have a lot of economical things they need to expend because by collecting the primary data to travel towards the respondents to get it finalized from the expertise. So it requires a lot of budget also. 
as compared to secondary data. Third one is time consuming. It is a time consuming process because first we need to identify the problem, then we need to make the objectives, hypothesis, then select the sample, make the questionnaire, get it finalized, do the pilot study, then collect the data from the respondents. Not over there the work is not end then we have to process the data so it's a lot of time consuming then respondent bias the respondents may be in a hurry for example and they are not reading the questionnaire they are just sticking the responses they may do the biasness or either the way the other case may be the respondents may not able to say the wrong to the thing so they are taking all the positive answers irrespective they feel so the product is not for example that much qualitative so respondents may not give the genuine answers while doing the survey then interviewer biases interviewer are nothing but researcher researchers may do biasness many a times say for example the researchers Say for example, the friend is there, so they are asking less number of questions. The another unknown person is there, they are asking the more number of questions. So at times, the interviewer may also do the biasness, ultimately he or she is a human being. Next, sampling error. While collecting the primary data, we need to decide the sample. From how many respondents we have to collect and what kind of respondents. What kind of means? It includes the all demographic factors, educational qualification, age, gender, marital status, income group, etc. So while deciding the sample, we need to consider all these factors also. Next processing of data. Once we collect the primary data, we are not shifting directly to the data analysis. Before that, we have to do the processing of data. The processing of data includes five steps, editing, coding, classification, tabulation and graphical presentation. So after collecting the data, the next step starts processing of data. Again, it's a time consuming. So all these are the disadvantages of primary data. So this is the first part, primary data. The second is secondary data. The data which is readily available the data which is already published or printed in some or the other sources if that data we are using that is called secondary data the secondary data is also called it as already published data the data which is already published in print form or in electronic form if we are using that data is called secondary data so secondary data, maybe we can use the public libraries, maybe we can uh, take into consideration the newspaper articles, journals, research papers, websites, etc. for our research work. That is the secondary data. Or even many a times on the ongoing basis, the government and the non-government organization does research. So if we are using their reports, that is also considered as a secondary data. So the data which is already published in print form or in electronic form, if we are using that data into our research work, that is called secondary data. Now let's look methods. What, which are the techniques of collecting the secondary data? Broadly, there are the two sources or two techniques, internal sources and external sources. Internal sources, here we are talking about in consideration of the company. Within the organization, the researcher may collect the information from the internal sources that is product analysis, the companies are doing sales analysis, customer analysis, analysis of the sales territories, sales frequency, financial analysis. You might be knowing each and every company, those who are listed, they have to make the annual reports. So in annual reports, they need to publish the financial statements which includes uh, uh, we can say trading account, profit and loss account, balance sheet, changes in working capital, cash flow statement, fund flow statement, ratio analysis. We can use that data into our research and even the each and every department works in the softwares like MIS software, marketing information system and in that we are having the sales record, 
according to the number of quantity cell, according to the area wise, according to the frequency wise, etc. So that information if we are using from the internal reports of the organization by various departments, that's called internal sources. Next is external sources, outside the organization. The other publications, if we are using that information, for example, government publications, the government does census reports they make. After every decade, once in a decade, the government analyze the population count. Then price statistic, yani wholesale price index, WIP. So the government is calculating wholesale price index also. N number of industrial statistics, how many number of industries, small scale industries are there in respective states, respective districts, etc. So if we are using the governmental reports, that is also a part of secondary data. Syndicate sources, syndicate sources, yani, there are the private companies, those who are doing the research on an ongoing basis. The company which is well known in India called Nielsen, many company does outsources by collecting the or by doing the research. And last we have written general publications like newspapers, magazines, bulletins, journals, brochures, etc. If you are using information from these sources are called journal publications. So these are the ways we can collect the external secondary data which is not in our organization but outside the organization and number of reports are there from those reports we are collecting the data. So external sources includes governmental publications, syndicate sources or general publications. From these publications if we are using the data that's the sec secondary data. Now let's look after the advantages and disadvantages. Merits of secondary data is opposite the disadvantages of primary data. Okay, the so secondary data less paperwork, less expensive, less time consuming, supplements to the primary data, large volume of data is available to us. We can make the quick decision because the data is already available. Automatically we does the analysis of the data. It requires less processing of data. Already the data might be edited. Now we just need to convert into a graphs for example. So these are the merits because secondary data is the data which is already published. It's already with us. Now nowadays everywhere there is a Wi-Fi facility. So no need of even internet pack. So we can use the Wi-Fi and collect the secondary data. Or we can say the secondary data is available to the organization internal reports like sales report, product report, product analysis, sales territory analysis, etc. So these data does not require much of efforts, much of time consuming, they are less expensive, they are less paperwork, etc. So these are the merits of secondary data. Let's look at the disadvantages of secondary data. The secondary data may not accurate, may not give the to the point results, the statistic, the numbers may not be up to date, the, there is problem of reliability, we can't completely 100% rely that date, that data is right, completely right. So problem of reliability, problem of specific data, the, there may be the biasness of the information, there may be the lack of in-depth information available to the sources or unsuitability, quite possible the data may not be suitable directly to our research work. So that may be the problems. Okay? So here in this video we have understood the two types of data collection, primary and secondary. Thank you for watching.